Hello everyone. My name is Durlab Raghuvanshi and I am a PGP student of Indian Institute of Management, Tiruchirappalli. Today I will talk about the prospects of agriculture in India. India is more or less an agrarian economy. In terms of the proportion of people employed in the agriculture sector, a whooping three-fifths of Indian population works in the primary sector. In contrast of that, only 16% is contributed by agriculture sector in our GDP. Now, such a big disparity results in massive underpayment of laborers, unskilled laborers and farmers that are working in the agriculture sector. Many have argued to improve the productivity of the farming sector, thereby raising the prices and wages of the working population. But not only is this measure a short term as there is so much you can increase the productivity of, but also difficult to bridge the gap as the proportion of workforce and GDP contribution of primary sector has a major disparity. The only other solution that can help pull the poor unskilled laborers out of poverty who are working in the primary sector is to focus more on labor intensive sectors. Historically, in other economies, manufacturing sector has filled that gap, absorbing the surplus labor that is working in the agriculture sector and improving their wage prospects. But as usual, India is a different case. India directly jumped from manufacturing sector to the service sector by passing the manufacturing sector. Now, that's good for the GDP numbers, but really bad for the employment numbers. That's because service sector, sector is a capital intensive industry and it requires highly skilled labor. It does not have the ability to absorb the unskilled surplus labor of primary sector. This leads to what, what we call a phase in which there is a jobless growth in our country. Now, there are many reasons for it ranging from difficult land and labor laws of our country to difficulty in opening a business, all of which has been discussed thoroughly by economists in India and in abroad. But in our video, we'll focus on the agrarian side of the, uh, of the story, the problems that our primary sector is facing and what could be the possible solutions to those problems. When it comes to the combined problem of agriculture sector and its corresponding human resources, there are two schools of thoughts. One that advocates the improvement in the agriculture sector, the other one which advocates uh, more inclination towards manufacturing and industrial sector, both of which are correct. But today in our video, we will talk about the problems of agriculture sector. Now, this school of thought majorly talks about the improvement that has been once brought in India during the time of Green Revolution. So, uh, but in order to achieve that, there are many things which we have to take care of before we can actually expect our agrarian sector to move towards that direction. So, we'll talk about the problems now. So, one of the biggest problem that Indian agriculture sector is facing right now is the fragmentation. Now, the Indian population is increasing at a very fast rate. Unfortunately, the area that can be cultivated isn't. According to NSSO, the average size of a holding of land has decreased from 1.67 hectares in 1981-82 to just 1.06 hectares in 2002-2003. Population holding less than one hectare of land accounts for almost 70% of the total land holders. Now, there is a big problem with this. The fragmented the land, the lesser the productivity. India suffers exactly with the same problem. One way to alleviate this problem is to adopt to commercial farming. In it, farmers lend their lands to the corporate sector for commercial and uniform farming. Now, what it results in is consolidation combined with the ability of corporations to go for horticulture crops for exports and food processing, which can increase the returns sufficiently not only for a handsome rent for the farmers who have lent their farms, but also to the corporate sector. Punjab is one of the few states that currently operates on commercial farming to some extent. But there are fear among masses that farming of this sort would result in mass job displacement. Now, it can easily be countered because as said earlier, corporate houses would adopt for export and food processing, both of which are labor intensive sectors. So this will not create a job, but will actually create a job creation and will also guarantee a handsome rent to the farmers. Second is the land right. 
historically after independence india tried to focus on land distribution from zamindars to the cultivators of the land that is tenants but in a democratic setup like india such a step is impossible to take because the zamindars are politically very powerful hence india shouldn't focus on the redistribution of the land and instead focus on better tenant rights rather than getting into the this cumbersome and difficult process the next problem is the rural credit one of the most prominent researchers in primary sector has found out that almost 60% of all credits a farmer takes is from organized financial institution and rest 40% from the unorganized fa- uh, financial institutions like local money lenders family friends etc the ratio deteriorates badly for small farmers now the problem with these unorganized financial institutions like vi- village money lenders is that they charge exorbitantly very high interest rates which are very detrimental to the farmers economically the best solution for such, such problem is a complete financial execu- inclusion not only through banking and private sector lendings but also with the help and collaboration with ngos self help groups food processor industry etc next we'll talk about the subsidies more specifically we'll talk about fertilizers subsidy electric subsidy and water subsidy now india has been giving massive subsidies to farmers as well as to fertilizers companies for decades this result in an inefficient fertilizer industry or even distribution of subsidies to the farmers wherein the rich farmers get more share of it and small farmers get very little of it apart from that the fiscal burden which government is suffering for from the time immemorial in my opinion the fertilizer subsidy should be completely phased out and instead the focus should be on an efficient cash transfer to the poor similar are the cases with electricity and irrigation subsidies as well which comes to the prominence only during the election period the privatization of electricity sector would be one of the major step which will be very detrimental for politicians to give away electricity subsidies and irrigation subsidies during elections in conclusion all the best in the possible long term remedy for agriculture sector as well as to the jobless growth would be to emphasize on the growth of manufacturing sector as it is a labor intensive sector and will absorb surplus labor but it might take 10 to 20 years for this plan to kick off so for a short term relief to the farmers there should be focus on better credit system uh, to farmers emphasize on commercial farming better irrigation facilities and rural roads and electrification sector that in my opinion should help the agriculture sector of india thank you